Hey, it's your girl Ray from Empower Evolution. <laughs> How y'all doing? I am so excited today about this word that God wants me to bring to you all. Um, it is something that I have been actually grappling with and God really wanted me to share a special word of the Lord for uh, with you, with all my little fellowship friends. I thank y'all so much for coming in and, and visiting with me and fellowshipping with me. Um, thank y'all so much for all the comments that you leave. Thank you for um, your prayer requests. Keep sending them. I'm going to keep praying with you and agreeing, agreeing with you that God is blessing you tremendously. And I know that God is a God of overflow and abundance. So I am expecting overflow and abundance for each and every one of y'all. So let's keep manifesting in, in prayer and faith as we live our life in, in obedience to God. I know it's not easy. Oh, I know it's not easy, but we can do it. You can do it. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. So today I wanted to share about it's okay to be different. It's okay to be different. So you know, a friend of mine um, actually uh, sent me this really, this really cool app, um, and it's called The Pattern. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but I don't know. It's some kind of like psychological thing or whatever, but it really helps you go delve in deep into like the patterns that you that you have in your life in relationships with yourself as well as with others and so it's a great learning tool um it was very helpful for me it's it still is it, it's also helpful for me to understand the dynamic um of, of the patterns that i have in specific relationships with specific people which is very learning uh very cathartic and healing and uh with, has been a great learning tool so but you know as I was learning about me, um, because first and foremost, that's why uh, I guess I did it. But as I was learning about me, of course it said, I'm weird. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very unique. I'm very different. Uh, yes, it's true that everyone is unique and different. But they said that most definitely... There is nobody like me on the planet, most definitely, like that I even am like in a, in a sense. And so I was like, you know, that kind of had me a little bummed because I want, I want to, I wanted to, you know, I've always been searching and trying to find someone that was like me, you know what I mean? Like that could really get me. And the other thing is, is I was looking at, like, I compared myself with different people in my life, romantic partners that I've had in my life. And I found that all of them that I've had, none of them knew really how to love me the way I need to be loved. And part of that is because they had patterns that they did, and I had patterns that I did. Um that we were completely unaware of were triggering each other. Also, um, that uh, made each other feel certain ways without intention. And so how, how many times have we been in a relationship where we feel like, oh yeah, you did that on purpose. You knew that was going to make me feel that way. Or, or you just wanted to hurt me or you, you know, how, how could you not love someone the right way? Um, why, you know, why, you know, and, and there's books on it about how, you know, people have their own unique ways of, uh, receiving and giving love. You know, whether you're like someone that likes to be told someone that likes to, uh, have gifts given someone you know that likes to experience and do different things go on outings and, and adventures to show love so we all have different ways that we express and give love touching is you know a big thing and so you know 
I I was like, wow, you know, so if I'm so unique, I'm so different, and nobody really, even though the there are there have been people that I've connected with that has said definitely the two of us were brought together, you know, by God, by the Holy Spirit. Definitely the two of us would help each other meet, you know, our destinies, fulfill our destinies. We're going in the same direction, which to me has been key to finding a partner, finding a, a husband, you know, being, you know, to, I said, you know, after all the years that I've been in, you know, relationship and I have been married before, it took me decades before I realized that one of the most important uh, aspects of a healthy, godly, fulfilling marriage would be, or even friendship or career, you know, any kind of relationship really. Um, but the foundation of that, other than shared faith in God, would be that both of us were joined together to get towards the, the, a similar destination in our life purpose. And for me, that's integral in who I choose to marry. So if I don't feel that we are aligned in our spiritual path and purpose, because for me, my purpose is to share the word of God, to change globally uh, the paradigm in the world of empowering other people empowering everyone in this world actually towards spiritual elevation and growth in Christ and the Holy, Holy Spirit to be prophetic empowerers and creators co-creators with God to manifest a better world that's my ultimate goal is manifesting a better world, a world of peace, of love, and of shared healing and growth. And that we all experience overflow of abundance and actually be what God created us to be. As my Father in Heaven created us and created Jesus Christ to come to earth on that mission, that, you know, I'm, I feel compelled to continue, uh, affirming affirming his mission i feel that that is the foundation of my destiny and i know that i will uh, complete and fulfill that destiny i know i was born to fulfill that destiny and so i know that that is going to come to pass um i don't know how exactly but i do know it's going to come to pass so that does make me unique. And it did say I was a visionary and all that, which is makes sense. I'm prophetic. But yeah, so I grappled with that. And I was like, that's frustrating to be different. And so God, bring it back to the word, God brought me to once again. And it's like actually twice that I'll just open my Bible. And literally, there's no, you know, there's no, um, I didn't fold the page there or anything. So it's the one part of my Bible. I didn't actually like fold the page and got all, you know, <laughs> jacked up. But it would open up to the same verse of scripture in Exodus. And it was about when Aaron and Miriam were chastising Moses, talking about him because he had married a Cushite, Zipporah an African dis descent woman, a black woman. And he had married her, but it wasn't about her color or skin color because all of the Israelites were all intermixed in all different, you know, flavors and tones. So it, it that didn't matter, but it was their, her culture and um, what distinguished her to them. And they felt that it wasn't in line with what they experienced and their experience and their their traditions and and he was I mean he was so different I mean it, it it was he was born different 
Moses was born looking unusual, standing out, glowing almost, uh, that Miriam, his sister, saw this and said, oh no, we have to hide him. He's special. He's different. He's unique. There, She saw in a vision, you know, who he possibly could be and who he, you know, would become. And, and then he was given a favor to become an adopted son of the Egyptian Pharaoh and live in a palace. But that wasn't his real destiny. That wasn't his true purpose. And so then he was odd there. And then after being odd there in the palace, then he was, he ended up having to flee and end up in the desert and he was odd there. And he changed things. And then he came back to Egypt and he changed things again. And, and, and all the people followed him. And once again, he chose a bride that was different. He was, he kept making different, he was unique and nobody understood him. Nobody really got him. No, you know, even though they followed him, followed him, they loved him. They just didn't quite understand him. Why is he so darn different? Why is he so weird? Why can't he be like everybody else? And you know, it can be so frustrating to people that they just don't get it. They just don't know how to love you the way you want to be loved. They don't know how to respond and take you. I've had people tell me, you know, you're so emotional. You, um, you really react. It's just You're just over emotional at times. And you know, it's funny, but I'm not. Um, it's just the way they perceive me because of my my uh the way i express myself but what's interesting is when i did the pattern it it affirmed i'm not i'm not an emotional reactionary person i actually very logically make choices and then implement them but i'm not emotional at all in that sense and it's it's quite interesting uh, how how people will perceive me to be when it's actually my intellect, it's my mind. But my mind is so expansive and different that um, it is hard for people to grasp or understand. Not trying to be puffed up or prideful or anything, because I I'm saying these things actually because I feel like other people can relate. That they too often feel different. That that you too may feel weird or or like people just don't quite get you or why is it that you have relationships and it just seems like people don't really know how to love you or don't really know how to understand you uh, where you feel overlooked or um, you might feel, you know, even at your job or in your family, you may feel rejected um, even from your family. You might feel like your own family doesn't get you. Why is that? You know, and like Moses, people that are that unique, um, that are called to be set apart, that are called to be even from birth, you know, by their own personality, by how God crafted and created them and fashioned them that they are called to be unlike and unusual, you know, unlike the, the herd, uh, to stand apart, to be set apart and to be unusual, to not be someone, you know, be that 1% or that 3% in all the world. You might be one of those three percenters in all the world. That's quite unique, you know, and, and it could be a very positive thing. And like Moses, especially if you are unique in the kingdom of God and you are unique in your spiritual path and your spiritual faith, then it's because you've been called for a special purpose. You've been called for a unique mission in the kingdom that only you can do. And it is the way that you communicate that weird way, that weird way you sing, that weird tone, and everyone's like, why does she sound like that? Why does she sing like that? She's 
sing like she's singing out of an old rusty can or something. And then Macy Gray becomes famous singing like that. Billy Holiday became famous singing like that. Fantasia Barreno became famous singing like that. Stevie Nicks, famous singing like that. Because they sounded unique. They sounded different. Nobody else accepted them initially until they carved out their own path. And it's that uniqueness that is actually your gift. And it's not anything to be ashamed of or hide. Even God will defend you. Because just like when, Mo, when Miriam and Aaron were talking about Moses and his different choices and why he was the way he was, God defended him. So I just want to encourage you today and know that God is on your side. God loves you. He will defend you. He will champion you. And he, he made you different. He made you unique. For a special purpose in him so trust in it celebrate it love yourself and it's okay if people don't love you exactly the way you feel like you need to be loved it's okay maybe nobody will <laughs> maybe nobody will love you exactly the way you need to be loved but what you do need to know is how to be independent loving and, and, and self-fulfilling within Christ so that your cup runs over from God and you're not dependent on the way other people perceive you or the way other people love you. That, I feel, is the greatest lesson that people that are different, that are actually anointed and appointed and called to be different, must learn that our, our happiness, our joy, our peace, comes from a fulfillment in Christ and an overflow in Christ and that this lesson and this experience that we are experiencing this earth by being unique empowers us to really be leaders and to really help other people because we have learned to depend completely on being satisfied through God in our relationship with God rather than other people. So that uniqueness now becomes our strength that we can give as a gift, a blessing to empower others. So I love y'all. This is your love bite for the day. Talk to you. Oh, and hit subscribe and like and share. Thank y'all so much. Talk to you soon.